for you, you piece of shit. Hey there, folks. How's it going? I hope you all are doing good. Welcome back to Dying Light 2 Stay Human, the survivor playthrough. In this episode, we are doing... Uh, the missing persons quest, I believe it's called. Right now, we're looking for Cliff's brother, or any signs of Cliff's brother, by the uh, Devil's Bridge. So, yeah. After that, we're gonna take care of some other quests, and then go towards the main quest. So, I think for now, we'll just kind of work on this stuff. I'm looking for a way down. Um, yeah, there it is. Okay. Looks like it's time to be a bit stealthy. I mean, I could go through this just like normal and run my way through, but I think I wanna, I think I wanna go a bit stealthy. Sadly, we do not yet have the super stealth perk that like allows us to move really fast. But I think okay. I think it's okay for now. Looks like there's a hole in the floor. Can't do anything with that. Okay. Um, maybe back this way. I don't exactly check what was over here. But aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Looks like our goal is down. Can't go that way. Down farther still. Too far down, or can I go through here? Too far down. Okay. Let's head this way. Because I can't go through there. And let's sneak through here. What I've learned is that you can get very close to waking up to Sleeping Beauties without actually waking them up. That's pretty nice. Okay, so here we go. Tell you the truth, I don't like the. I'm always afraid. Something's lurking out there. Okay. Looks like there's two people here. Can I take him out stealthily? I can try. Okay, that works. <laughs> that certainly works. Let's open this door. There we go. Easy way in and out. And looks like we're heading through here. Damien? Damien? Nah, I'm Cliff. Wow. Resemblance is uncanny. Guards! Wait, stop. Damien sent me. How did you escape? Escape? I have no reason to escape, man. So you're not... You're working with them, aren't you? Well, duh. Listen, Cliff, what I really want to know right now is about the murder of Commander Lucas. The PK Commander? What about him? Did you or your people kill him? No fucking way. We're not suicidal. Anyway, we got bigger fish to fry. Like you, for instance. Me? What the hell do you mean? You and Damien haven't figured it out? Oh, well. I love my brother, but he's a dope. Always has been. You tricked your brother to send innocent men to their deaths because you wanted to find me? Waltz can run it all down for you himself. Or rather, for what you've got from Dylan. Wait, Waltz? Where is he? Dunno. 
They haven't filled me in on all the details yet. Aiden? You there? Have you found Cliff? Yes, but you won't like it. Damien, bro. Unfortunately, now's not a good time to chat. And as for you, you finally found Dr. Walls. Downside, he's found you. That's him, fellas. The one who took the doc's toy. Cliff? Fuck! What? What are you saying? The doc's gonna be thrilled! Looks like we got a fight on our hands. <laughs> chance to do damage strikes and I can't. Oh my suck Damn for you. you. Are you still there? Come in, Damien. God, can you hear me? Ader. Did the lead pan out? No. Dead end. I'm not surprised. What can you do? I'll keep digging. Alright, looks like we're heading back to the bazaar. Yeah. Seems my best bet. Alright. So there's a main reason why I wanted to do this quest, despite having already done it. If you haven't seen that playthrough, I'll try and keep it spoiler free. Just in case you haven't. So, you know. Any cars? Yeah, this one. There we go. I love how when you do a big jumps, the game sort of, you know, stops the momentum of the music, so it can kind of give you like a little pause there. There we go. Oh, I missed. Dang. Okay. I was so close, too. That's all good. That's not gonna kill me, is it? Yeah, okay, so those actually count as, uh, groups. Or as, like, car cops. Stop landing. There we go. Didn't exactly make it as elegant of styles, but we still made it nonetheless. 
Kind of came in the wrong way, though. Oops. Have you seen the ginger uh, with a mohawk? Take Bastard that. stole my last bottle of water. All right, we're selling the corporal gloves. Um, selling both of those. I didn't sell the pilgrim stuff, did I? You were supposed to be discreet, not go shouting in the middle of the bazaar. Okay. Yeah, that's that's fine. Damien, what's this all about? This Let me in. How was I? You hear me, Damien? Open this door before I bust it down. Wait, wait, wait. What's what's going on? Where's Damien? He locked himself in the tower. What's that all about? Beats me. Just started raving about something being all his fault. He was in a bad way. He's not answering his radio. He didn't look like he was in a talkative mood. Any other way into the tower? Not really. Not by ordinary means. People have tried to climb the wall, but those who have usually end up getting scraped off the ground. Yeah, I'll give it a shot. Okay. Just like everyone we should be getting ready to climb this wall. Let's heal up real quick. Alright, so uh, let's start right here, shall we? How convenient. That it's right there. Alright, so we're gonna head up. Looks like we're going this way. So I remember this being a little finicky last time I tried. <laughs> Specifically like jumping and landing onto things like this. Yeah. But hopefully that's been uh, fixed somewhat. Seems to be doing fine. Oh, I was close. <laughs> Uh, there we go. Right. So. Let's hop up here. We're going this way. Yeah, seems like it. Okay. How we'd get there from? Oh, okay. Then we're just gonna hop onto this gargoyle. What is this? Picture developer. Uh, rock music station. Listen on regular FM. Frequencies. What was this? Safe code? For what? There's a safe somewhere? Collectibles. Safe code. 5 times 100 plus 15 minus 5. So PEMDAS. Alright, so it's 500 plus 15. Parentheses, exponents, multiplication, addition. Or multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. So, there's no parentheses. There's no exponents. So, multiply. There's no divide. Uh, add and subtract. So, 500. So, plus 15. Uh, so, that's 510. Because it's minus 5. 
So five one zero. What's in here? Let's try five one zero. Unless I'm just bad at math. There we go. What is this? Carl's Journal number four. Huh. We'll listen to that after this cutscene, because I think we actually have all four of them. There might be more, but I don't know. Damien! Stop or I jump! Wait! Okay. I've stopped. Relax, Damien. Let's both relax. What do you want? To talk. About what? So last time I chose this one, uh, I didn't end too well. About life. I don't know. Uh, about life? Fuck you. That's what you're hung up on. That you're alive and so many aren't now because of you. Damien? I killed them. All of them. Look, man, it was a bad deal all around. You aren't evil. Okay, you were trying to save your brother. They backed you into a corner. But my brother is one person. One person. But I've killed so many. No. Sent them to be killed. You didn't kill them yourself. What choice did you have? Believe me, I've done plenty of bad in the name of good. And then... Just plain bad. But I'm not an evil person. And neither are you, Damien. I am. I could have found another way. But did I try? I can't close my eyes without seeing the face of every kid. I said, hey, you're new around here, too. They're all dead. And now so is my brother. Because of me. I can't take it anymore. Sure you can. You can prove how strong you really are. Live your life and use each day to make it right. It's too much to fix. I can't, I, it can never be enough. I'm sorry, Aiden. I don't recall there being a message from your brother, so I'll say this one. Make room, I'm jumping with you. Are you crazy? Why not? We can go together. Now what's one more death added to your tab? Why would you? No, <laughs> you would never. Try me. Jump. Go on. Jump. I'll be right behind. You ever hear that most jumpers change their minds mid-air? Uh, no. That's true. They're falling and think, oh fuck, maybe this actually wasn't the smartest thing I've done in my life. Soon my head's gonna smash open like a watermelon, and I'll writhe around with no control over my arms and legs, and beg for someone to finish me off. But nobody's gonna finish you off here, Damien. Except maybe the infected. They'll eat you foot to forehead, Damien. Slowly. I'm going. See you on the ground. Wait! Let's talk. About what? I... I, I don't know. About life? Maybe. Sure. But I guess I don't have a life anymore. All the guys that died, they died because... And quit being a broken record, will ya? You'll get over it. Now pull yourself the fuck together and back away from that ledge, or you really will fall. You feel bad about those deaths? That's great. It means you got a conscience. There's not many left in this town with a conscience, but you got one, and that's why you should live. To make up for what you did. There will always be time to jump. Tomorrow, day after, no rush. Look, I won't stop you, but keep this in mind. Like I said before, make it right. Keep living, at least till you make it right. So, how many deaths do you think you're responsible for? Don't make me say it, Aiden. Eight, maybe. Eight? Even better. Better? Yeah, because now, you have to save eight lives. Deal? But... You gotta balance those scales, Damien. Do we have a deal? Deal. Smart move. 
I better not regret this. You won't. I got a job for you. Hey, that's my line. <laughs> How about that? Damien's got a sense of humor. Gallows humor, I guess. Yeah, it seems appropriate, all things considered. Aiden? Yeah? Thanks. No problem. I saved your life, kid. Now don't fuck it up, okay? <sighs> Jesus, Damien. What's up with you? Were you about to jump? I was, but Aiden... What's with this? It's all my fault business. Talk to me. Yeah, the people from the bazaar. My brother... Oh, wait, hold up. Don't confuse yourself again, Damien. Just relax and shut up for now. Wait, he was just talking about killing people or something. What's going on here? And the kid just found out his brother died. He's in shock, babbling nonsense. You cut the man some slack, will you? Have a heart. Fuck, Cliff's dead. No wonder he's all torn up. I get it now. My sympathies, Damien. You can talk to me whenever you want. Okay. Side quest missing persons. Complete. Alright. I may have used a guide for that one, I'll be honest. Uh, first time I did this, he uh, ended up down there. On the ground. Right about there. So, as you can see, I wasn't very successful. So, uh, I looked up a guide. Yeah. Anyways, um, I'm glad I get to see that difference in, uh, um, that difference in, uh, you know, story. Sorry, completely blanking there. Alright, collectibles. We have Carl's Journals 1 through 4. I'll play those real quick. I'm recording this for posterity. So they can learn from my mistakes. To warn all who follow about the worst of plagues. And I am not referring to the virus. I was born into a very religious family. My earliest childhood memories? Prayer. Every morning and every evening. Knees scraped from constant contact with oak floorboards. When I grew up, I had a very hard time. I was lonely. I suffered. Despite my upbringing, I turned to religion for solace. It gave me the answers I sought. That I came to realize my father had tried to give me. To endure bullying is to earn heavenly rewards. God was my best friend. My only friend. I talked to him every day, and I believed that he listened to me, and answered, and loved me too. I felt like I owed him a debt, and that's why I enrolled in seminary. I think I became a fanatic in a way. The urge to spread his teachings, convert others, it was not about God. It was about my own shortcomings. It was about me. There was something unhealthy about it. And dangerous. At the age of 23, I became a priest. Still just a snot-nosed kid. And I was supposed to be a shepherd of souls. I felt I was meant for this. I had answered the call. If God was with me, then who could be against me? I was full of conviction, faith that I could make the world a better place. But the world <laughs> had other plans. Many times I performed someone's last rites. I held their hands as they died. And in that last moment, in the millisecond before their last breath, I saw in them relief. Not because they were moving on to some kind of better world, to heaven, but because it was the end of something painful. They could finally bow out of the futile and exhausting dance of life. Their chore of living would be over. Their suffering would end. It was something completely incomprehensible to me. 
How can a person reject the gift of life? To accept death joyfully. For a person as strong as me, this was something very disturbing. Or maybe they knew about something that I had not seen. Did they see it in their last moment? This was the first crack in the edifice of my faith. And then, the epidemic started. <clears throat> There's a term for what came next. A crisis of faith. And with me, it started long before the epidemic. But when people started to turn into monsters, when city after city was eaten by darkness and poison, I started to wonder, where is God? Is he putting us through a trial? Or has he abandoned us? When Black Monday came, I no longer had any doubts. There is no God. There never was. Because of the THV Genmont bombings, two million people lost their lives. The streets carpeted with human corpses. What God would allow that? He would have to be infinitely cruel. Of course, other so-called men of the cloth offered nonsensical observations that this was the will of God. Punishment for our wickedness, that Colonel Williams himself served as the hand of God. But that didn't matter anymore. The curtain had been torn off. People lost their faith. Because what were they supposed to believe in? No one wanted a God like that. And in that moment, to my own surprise, I felt free, as if I were a puppet who finally cut the strings that controlled him since birth. Free at last. After the Black Monday Massacre, most people lost their faith. So did I. But it only took a few years before some people started to form cults that adapted elements like old deities and pagan faiths. They even started performing sacrifices, thinking someone would send them rain. People need shackles. They want to be controlled, lied to. They want someone to tell them how to live, what to do and what not to do. They prefer this to taking responsibility for their choices. Some researchers think religion is a linguistic virus that alters brain function and suppresses the ability for critical thinking. I repeated the same trite phrases for years, not thinking for a second about what I was actually saying. And what I was saying was mostly about instilling a feeling of guilt. It all dripped in evil, punishment, penance, disgusting, oppressive baggage pressing you down into the dirt. But I tossed it off, as did thousands of others. The epidemic was a tragedy, but also a tremendous opportunity. An opportunity to fully free oneself from the bonds of religion. To stop believing in fairy tales and instead believe in yourself. That's what Francoise used to say. And I supported her vision. I joined her movement. Together, we can create a new community based on reason, mutual respect, empathy, and cooperation. One with room for everyone, including you. <laughs>